Richard Dawkins once said that the greatest evidence for evolution at a pan, uh, within a question and answer session at the University of California at Berkeley is DNA. That's what Richard Dawkins says. Because when Dawkins said DNA is the greatest evidence of evolution, he was pointing out right here that when you look at the pattern and the strands and everything, if you look at all of our biology, if you look at all of creation, all the organisms around the world, if you look at everything, if you look at everything, all of biology, everything of God's creation within our world today, if you look at all of it, it fits their family pattern of evolution, how the DNA pattern is set. So if you recall evolution, they have a certain pattern right here. So this is totally hypothetical, okay? This is totally hypothetical. But basically, they have a, t a tired structure of animals right here, right? So then fish, and then amphibian, and then reptile, and then bird, and then, you know, man eventually, man, monkey. So everything consists of DNA somewhere here, okay? Everything, all of life. But within the DNA pattern, it fit this ladder. That's what they said. So because of that, Richard Dawkins said that we all share a common ancestor. So it shows that within the DNA, everything seems to show a common ancestor. There is some sort of beginning of DNA that showed this pattern eventually. We all share it together. So this is proof of evolution. Now, I gave a video debunking that one where I pointed out Genesis chapter 1. You know why this is pretty obvious? It's because it came from the same ground where God created all of life. <laughs> you got to realize that. So in Genesis chapter 1, you'll notice that at verse 9 through 13, he created plant life, right? What did he do? From the waters and from the dry land, he had the plant life formed. Now, you read verses 20 through 23, You'll notice also right there from the waters and the ground, God brought forth birds and fish. You also know that from the ground, in verse 25, that God created uh, the land animals and man. So this is pretty obvious why we all seem to have a similar DNA somewhere. There's something common about our DNA. It's because we all came from the same earth that the Lord created us out of. So that's pretty obvious. It only supports the Bible, not evolution. Now, a lot of evolutionists, they would try to get on my case right here, and they'll try to disprove yours truly that, hey, the ground does not have DNA, dummy. Uh, what do you mean? The ground, does not, uh, the ground doesn't have DNA, dummy, so how can you argue that? Well, then why would you argue that we all came from the ground originally? Yeah. Now, who's the dummy? Okay, so who's the dummy? So use your head right here. But here's another thing, okay? You got to realize this. God just does not use the God just does not use the earth to create everything. You got to realize this. How did God create man? By the breath of his mouth, Amen. by his power. See, he inserts the life and the DNA through the common substance that they came from, through the common earth, and he also puts a common substance. Why? Because it proves a common designer, not a common ancestor. Amen. So if you see an imprint within DNA, that shows commonality, it only proves a common designer. That is common sense, and that is logically proven in everyday life. Right. If you see an imprint within anything, artwork, cars that are made, computers, and they try to imitate computer patterns with DNA, etc., all of that, an imprint that shows commonality, makes people know there's this creator made this same thing that I saw earlier right here because I see a common imprint somewhere. Amen. See, it only proves a common designer. Now, Richard Dawkins knows that. He actually knows that. That's why he said, when he mentioned common ancestor, he said this, the only thing that would uh, argue against that is a common designer argument. And you know how he argued for his case right there? Nothing. He just acted like James White using a sarcastic tone like, like, oh, the only option is common designer. And 
he does not even prove his case. He just uses it as a sarcastic tone where it can make the people believe his saying and laugh along with him. Ha, 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 like that's a dumb thing. Yeah. No, you, that, is not a, that is not a good argument. If you're going to argue, you have to, put, you have to give case-by-case case logic right here. You can't just use a sarcastic tone and pretend I win. It's like me saying, it's like me saying, and they don't believe in green aliens from outer space. And then you all laugh along with me because it should be obvious we all believe in green aliens from outer space. That's the same dumb thing, same dumb line of argument to use. Just because you use a sarcastic tone, that doesn't mean you win. That is, that is childish argument. That is a dumb argument. Now, the thing is this right here, is that there is evidence, scientific evidence for this common designer. You have to prove common designer, not, e not evolution, where we all evolved from a common ancestor. You might say, why? Because this has been proven uh, by scientists. It was not too long ago, I think. The title of the article is Massive Genetic Study Reveals 90%, 90% of Earth's animals appeared at the same time. This is by Thaler. This conclusion is very surprising, and I fought against it as hard as I could. Look, look at that. Why would they argue? Why would these scientists argue? I, I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe it because it destroys your entire system and belief, your religion of evolution. That's why. By the way, this is not a secret. If you're an honest graduate student, Okay, if you're an honest graduate student and I took research methods, they will honestly teach you that scientists, I studied this in my research methods class, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but the professor actually said that a large percentage of scientists, if not 90% of them, are biased. Yeah. Because when they do the research and the experiment, they realize it contradicts their theory. In other words, their pre preconceived belief already. So because of that, you know what they want to do? They don't want to believe it. Yeah. So they would do reruns and retrials of the research and experiment to try to prove their theory and belief, and it cannot be done. That's right. So that's why what they would do is ignore it. Yeah. So then they'll try to make other arguments around it. Here's another one right here. So let me keep reading. This, this just gets better and better, bless God. In a massive genetics uh, study, senior research associate at the Program for the Human Environment at Rockefeller University, Mark Steckel, and University of Basel geneticist David Thaler discovered that virtually 90% of all animals on Earth appeared at right around the same time. Now, let me ask you this. What does this prove? Genesis chapter 1. What did the Bible say at Genesis chapter 1? He all created them, boom, just like that. Amen. Just like that. And by the way, this also makes sense why there's something common. There's a commonality right here of an imprint, right. DNA. You know why? He went boom like that from one designer. The only argument against that is a common designer. Come on, laugh along with me. Why aren't you? Oh, 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 oh. See, what is that? This is proven by respected scientists right there. Now, Richard Dawkins, he needs to see the dawn and see the light right here and see that, look, you can fight against it as hard as you can, and he knows that deep down inside his heart. So we see right here that the Bible definitely disproves evolution Amen. right here.